Good morning! Try not to spend too much time working out how someone can be both an uncle and a grandpa, because in the world of Cartoon Network's popular series, Uncle Grandpa, logic takes a backseat to lots of fun and plenty of weirdness. Hi everyone, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator, and today we're checking out some info about the show named after everyone's impossibly named relative. This is 107 Facts on Uncle Grandpa. Let's get started. <laughs> Series creator Peter Braungart first entered the world of animation working on Futurama at the age of 19. He started making animated films on his own at just 7 years old. One of his first ever animations was of a character swallowing a bee, which really helped create a buzz around his work. Braungart first arranged pitch meetings with Cartoon Network through his friend and boss, Steven DeStefano, who he met working in boutique animation studios around New York. They each came up with ideas separately and pitched independently from one another. Pitching Uncle Grandpa was Braungart's first time pitching to a big studio, so congrats on getting it on the first try. While Braungart's Uncle Grandpa series Bible from his pitch meeting was being distributed around the office in 2006, Carl Greenblatt, the creator of Chowder, offered him a job on the show, which was Braungart's first job with Cartoon Network. Craig McCracken, creator of Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, encouraged Braungart to pitch an early version of Uncle Grandpa to a short-lived Cartoon Network shorts program called the Cartoon Institute. The Uncle Grandpa the pilot was made during an off period of the production for Chowder. During his early years at Cartoon Network, Braungart also animated storyboards for Flapjack and half of a storyboard for Adventure Time. Initially, Secret Mountain Fort Awesome was greenlit based on the original Uncle Grandpa short, centering the show around the monsters since producers at Cartoon Network didn't think the Uncle Grandpa character could carry an entire show on his own. Looks like they were wrong. Of all of the shows developed for the Cartoon Institute, only Secret Mountain Fort Awesome and Regular Show were greenlit for production of a full series. After the short pilot and before the premiere of the series, Uncle Grandpa popped up in Secret Mountain Fort Awesome in an episode titled Secret Mountain Uncle Grandpa. It also featured the first appearances of Belly Bag, then named Fanny Pack, and Giant Realistic Flying Tiger. The original short was made and distributed in 2008, earning a call following among those who saw it. It was later nominated for an Emmy in 2010. The first episode of Uncle Grandpa premiered in September 2013. It had a total of 153 episodes split into five seasons. Though it's divided into seasons, it aired new episodes regularly throughout its run, which was just under four years, meaning they didn't normally take breaks between seasons and just started them back to back for our never ending viewing pleasure. For those who haven't checked it out yet, one, what are you waiting for? And two, the show is about Uncle Grandpa and his friends who live with him in a magical RV. They travel around the universe going on magical adventures and solving problems in weird or unconventional ways. Uncle Grandpa is actually everyone in the world's both uncle and grandpa, which is why he's always trying to help children out. There is fam, but they don't actually know it, so it kind of gets complicated. While Braungart doesn't have a blood relative uncle, he called eccentric friends of his dad's uncle growing up, and they served as a major source of inspiration for the character Uncle Grandpa. And one of these uncles let him drive his car when he was just seven. Guess seven was totally his year. Another of Braungart's inspirations for Uncle Grandpa was, well, himself. He chose to reflect some of what he sees as his own personal shortcomings in the character. The name Uncle Grandpa came from Braungart wanting to combine a crazy uncle archetype with a wise, friendly grandpa archetype with a little bit of magic thrown in to round out the character. The 1970s to 80s Mad Magazine was a major visual influence on the show. As a child, Braungart would sneak around the house to check out his older brother's issues of Mad, of course against the wishes of his mother. Some of Braungart's favorite cartoons as a child were He-Man and Looney Tunes. He also liked early Tim Burton movies like Pee-wee's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice. In addition, Warner Brothers, Tex Avery cartoons, and Max Flesher cartoons specifically were a big influence on the surreal style of Uncle Grandpa. One one device often used in the show is breaking the fourth wall. Not only do Uncle Grandpa's zany antics lead him to plenty of fourth wall breaks, including realizing he's in a cartoon in one episode, but many side characters have meta moments throughout the series as well. Uncle Grandpa changed in a few key ways since his appearances in the pilot and on Secret Mountain Fort Awesome. Bags under his eyes and forehead wrinkles were removed, his legs were made less hairy, an X on his chin was taken off, and the color of his hat was changed from rainbow to blue. It's all just part of growing up and getting older in his case. Belly Bag also changed from pilot to series. In the pilot, he's an inanimate object and not the magical being he would become in the show. The idea for giant realistic flying tiger came from Braungart wanting to draw Battle Cat from He-Man into the first storyboard of the show. But because he did not feel capable of drawing a realistic tiger, he took a picture from Google and put it directly into the storyboard. To animate giant realistic flying tiger, the animators created a composite of multiple tiger stock images 
images. The poor quality of animation for the character is an internal joke by the animators. Pizza Steve's origin story? Brongo was working on another show that had never gotten picked up and, in a moment of inspiration, drew a pizza with sunglasses on a dry erase board. He was inspired by old fast food mascots and the fact that a pizza with sunglasses is actually a pretty cool idea. The name of the original character was Stu Slice. Then Browngart changed it to Pizza Joe, but there was a copyright issue, so creative director Casey Alexander came up with the name Pizza Steve. Characters would actually change in appearance from time to time due to different styles of various storyboard artists. In Wasteland, for example, Uncle Grandpa and Mr. Gus have slightly different designs, with Uncle Grandpa sporting a longer mustache and a bent hat. The show's simple premise was meant to allow for the creators to go in as many different directions with the show as possible. One of the secrets to the success of the show's wackiness is that the character archetypes are consistent, so that no matter how weird the show gets, the characters' reactions always remain the same. Unlike other Cartoon Network shows like Adventure Time and Steven Universe, continuity is non-existent in Uncle Grandpa, which allows for its wacky brand of humor to have literally no consequences. Each episode of the show is structured into segments, so that each 11-minute episode contains a main story and a separate short. This was inspired by Ren and Stimpy and Dexter's Laboratory. This is also similar to the old style of Hanna-Barbera cartoons, which usually contain contained five to seven minute segments. The show features a number of episode archetypes, including helping a kid episodes and Seinfeld-esque character-based episodes, where the fun is in how the show's ridiculous characters do basic human things. Despite the show's fantastical setting, the problems faced by the kid characters that pop up from time to time are meant to be more grounded and widely relatable. For example, being afraid of the dark or not finishing homework inspired some of the episode's plots. Music for the show was created by Mike Conti and Tommy Meehan. Conti plays guitar and sings for the band Early Man and also did the music for Fort Awesome. Meehan plays banjo in an experimental folk metal band called The Manx. Other great music has been featured in the show, some as parodies. For example, in the short titled Uncle Grandpa Sings the Classics, a number of popular songs are parodied, including some by German techno pioneers Kraftwerk, rapper MC Hammer, and punk rock shock rocker Gigi Allen. In addition to serving as showrunner, Braungart also did the voice of Uncle Grandpa. What a multitasker. Braungart didn't initially want to do the voice for Uncle Grandpa, as he was not trained as a voice actor. But out of necessity, in the pitch meeting, he did the voice to sell the idea to Cartoon Network. Later on, the network wanted him to do the voice and even after he auditioned talented voice actors. In the early days of recording Uncle Grandpa, Braungart was too shy to record in front of others. He had the microphone moved into the corner of the studio and kept his back to the staff that was recording him. The voice actors eventually all recorded together in the same room at the same time, allowing them to play off of one another's energy. The one time that Uncle Grandpa was voiced by a different voice actor, was in guest directed shorts, in which Adventure Time creator Penn Ward did all of the voices himself for his segment. Kevin Michael Richardson, the voice of Mr. Gus, also did the voice of Shredder in the current incarnation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and won an Emmy for his portrayal of the Joker in The Batman. Eric Bauza, voice of Bellybag, also does the voice of Zarna, She-Warrior of the Apocalypse. Bellybag's voice is inspired by WWE wrestler China. This isn't the only connection that the show has to the world of professional wrestling. Wrestler Ric Flair plays himself in the season one episode, The History of Wrestling. Woo! Styling and profiling. The voice actors were allowed some room to improvise. While Braungart generally stuck to the script, Kevin Michael Richardson was a fan of ad-libbing some of Mr. Gus's lines. The main voice cast often used stock phrases to find their character's voice before recording a session. It may come as no surprise that Braungart's was Good Morning and Adam Devine's as the egocentric Pizza Steve was Pizza Steve. The process of creating an episode started with a collective brainstorming process in the writer's room, writing an outline with the beginning, middle, and end, and getting the episode visually storyboarded. Then the episode was designed with actual artwork, and finally, it was animated by a Korean animation studio. Once they got it back, it was edited into the final finished product. The animation was hand-drawn by a team of 20 to 30 animators. They all drew on digital tablets except one crew member who sometimes used pen and paper. Rather than have conversational human sounding voices, the characters of Uncle Grandpa have exaggerated voices. In order to, as with the visuals, take advantage of the freedom allowed with the animation medium. The target audience for Uncle Grandpa was 6 to 11 year old kids, but obviously it can be enjoyed by viewers of any age. The time it took to record the voices for one episode was just 4 hours. As you may know, cartoons take a really long time to create. 
Each main story of Uncle Grandpa took 9 to 10 months to animate. The shorts were developed independently and matched to each episode after they were produced. Uncle Grandpa featured a number of guest directors and animators in an all shorts episode, including Super Joe's Mike Wartella, Adventure Time's Penn Ward, and Max Winston, who created I Live in the Woods. While the main episodes were primarily scripted with a little bit of room for improvisation, the shorts were mostly improvised. They were given little more than a general outline. Then in storyboarding and writing, the writers and artists riffed on different ideas. Animating Major League Baseball players into the show for the episode Uncle Baseball involved creating three to four versions of each player. They coordinated with the MLB to get approved use of real team logos, then had the players record their lines over the phone. The Uncle Grandpa series became so popular it was used as the basis for Cartoon Network's Saturday morning programming block called Good Mornings with Uncle Grandpa for a short period of time. Why that title? Well, if you didn't know, Uncle Grandpa's catchphrase is Good Morning, which he says no matter the time of day. This came from Brown Guard's dad who used to say good morning all the time. The RV that Uncle Grandpa drives is normal size on the outside, but is endless or at least impossibly large on the inside. This was inspired by Brown Guard's impression of the factory from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which he also imagined as being infinitely large. One of the show's reoccurring short segments, New Experiences with Barry Nice and Hot Dog Person, was spearheaded by writer Audie Harrison, with whom Brown Guard went to college. These segments were actually based on a student film that Harrison once made. Some of the shorts were purely experimental and have nothing to do with the characters from the show. For example, a short called Cool or Dumb features two turtles deciding whether something is cool or dumb. The shorts also allowed the series creators to experiment with new styles, taking on new and unique art styles during the art direction phase of production. In total, five episodes are made up entirely of shorts, adding up to basically one per season, though there are two in season one and none in season four. Uncle Grandpa is thought of by the creators to be the ultimate cartoon character. His body can stretch and change shape in an exaggerated way that's essentially a heightened version of classic cartoon characters from the Looney Tunes era. Uncle Grandpa can remove and swap out his body parts at will and even has alternate heads, bodies, and noses in his bedroom. Something that's not easy to swap out? Middle names. Uncle Grandpa's middle name is Larry, making his full name Uncle Larry Grandpa, which rivals my middle name, which is actually time. Justin Time. It's horrible. A driver's license in the episode Aunt Grandpa reveals that Uncle Grandpa is 4'3 and 150 pounds. Another thing you may not have known about Uncle Grandpa, he has an allergy to dandelions. So don't blow him around him. Uncle Grandpa did a crossover with Steven Universe in Steven Universe's second season. The non-canonical episode aired on April 2nd, the day after April Fool's Day, and as a prank, Steven Universe writer Matt Burnett tweeted that this bizarre episode was indeed part of the show's canon. Long-running heavy metal band Melvins appeared in the show in an episode centered around the animated counterparts helping a girl perform in a talent show. Apparently, they recorded their lines without pants on. Hey, you know, I mean, whatever inspires you, right? Brown Guard's personal favorite character is Pizza Steve. He describes voice actor Adam Devine, also known for co-creating and starring in Workaholics, as, quote, a match made in heaven. One of Pizza Steve's skills is Italian karate, which he references throughout the series. Steve has a superpower, if you can call it that, of being able to consume very hot, hot sauce. He's been known to put habanero sauce on ice cream and even drink it straight from the bottle. In one of the short Slice of Life with Pizza Steve shorts, and again in the episode Brain Game, it's revealed that Pizza Steve likes to eat pizza. Yep, he's a cannibal, but honestly, can you blame him? Pizza Steve has three secrets revealed in the episode Pizza Steve's Diary. One, he wishes to be more like rival Mr. Gus and has nothing against him. Two, the girlfriends of whom he sometimes speaks about have all been imaginary. And three, he wears sunglasses to cover up his constant flow of tears. Mr. Gus is over a million years old and honestly, he looks pretty good for his age. Her first name is Breakfast. He was named after a prehistoric version of Uncle Grandpa after being hatched from an egg. In the episode Mr. Gus, it's revealed that he's a big fan of Steven Universe. He even has his own gem sona, Mr. Gusite. Just to be clear, Gusite is not a real kind of gemstone. Personality wise, giant realistic flying tiger is a teenage girl, a girl who has boy band posters in her room and loves girly things. Even though Bellybag is a central character, he doesn't speak in every episode, probably because he, he has his mouth full. Uncle Grandpa's favorite food, or at least one of them, is peanut butter. He reveals his seemingly limitless love for PB in a song called I Love Peanut Butter. Uncle Grandpa can create doppelgangers, some of which have developed personalities of their own. Like his babysitter clone in the episode Uncle Grandpa Sitter and Funny Face Head from the episode Funny Face. One point of comparison for Uncle Grandpa used by the show's creators is Santa Claus. It's later revealed in the
the show that Uncle Grandpa is related to Santa Claus, who is actually the one person he's not an uncle or grandpa of because they're brothers. Even though Santa Claus is real in the world of Uncle Grandpa, we find out in the episode Secret Santa that he has impersonators who help him during Christmas time when he's busiest. Very Nice, who appears in both his own short segment and the main show, is the inspiration for a number of products that pop up from time to time. For example, he appears in toy form in a few episodes, as well as on a serial called Berrios. Very convenient, if you ask me. Punk rock side character Kevin E. P. Pants appears in the background of a number of Uncle Grandpa episodes and is a significant character in the episode viewer special. He was also a character on Secret Mountain Fort Awesome and appeared in the crossover before it was a show episode, Secret Mountain Uncle Grandpa. The megastore Mart Mart, which appears in the episode Mustache Cream, was also in Secret Mountain Fort Awesome. Might these two shows share a universe or simply an eccentric creator? Cartoon conspiracy. The news channel in Escalator and a few other episodes episodes, NNN News is a parody of American news channel, CNN News. However, an actual news channel in Japan is called NNN. Cartoon Network characters past and present that have all been influences on Uncle Grandpa all make cameo appearances in the Grampies. These characters include Finn and Jake, the Powerpuff Girls, Samurai Jack, the Crystal Gems, Dexter, and Dee Dee, and more. Even the voice actors for Buttercup, Jake the Dog, and Steven Universe all make guest appearances. And honestly, if you haven't seen this, it's awesome. Other cartoons can be presumed to exist in the world of Uncle Grandpa. In New Kid, Tommy, one of the kids who Uncle Grandpa is tasked with helping, fantasizes about working at the one and only Krusty Krab. Uncle Grandpa's yearbook in the episode Viewer Special contains a few details for eagle-eyed viewers. It shows both the main cast of Secret Mountain Fort Awesome and a photo of a young brown guard. Aunt Grandma is an antagonist to Uncle Grandpa and another Number of episodes, embodying everything he's not. However, she's not actually everyone's aunt and grandma. She just chose the name to help her become the ultimate anti-Uncle Grandpa. Uncle Grandpa is not always the hero. In the episode Bad Morning, Uncle Grandpa plays the role of the antagonist, with the rest of the cast of characters attempting to calm him down. Shaquille O'Neal makes a guest appearance in the episode Perfect Kid as himself. This is the fourth time that Shaq has acted in an animated series. Not only does Andrew W.K. guest star in the episode Shower Party, but he gets a pie smeared on his character's face, which is a visual reference to his blood-soaked face on the cover of his debut album, I Get Wet. The episode Ballin is revealed to take place in 2013, so if the other episodes can be assumed to take place in a similar timeline, the show essentially takes place in the 2010s, aside from episodes like 1992 called that explicitly take place in another time period. The episode Uncle Cupid includes an implied same-sex kiss and same-sex couple, making Uncle Grandpa the third Cartoon Network show with explicit LGBT friendliness following Clarence and Steven Universe. To build hype for an episode titled Uncle Grandpa Babies, Cartoon Network aired reruns of Baby Looney Tunes throughout the week it aired in August 2015. In the episode Uncle Grandpa Shorts, Uncle Grandpa says, quote, don't be silly giant realistic flying tiger, we are doing it live and careful with that language, end quote, which is a reference to an infamous profanity-laden Bill O'Reilly rant from the 90s. Uncle Grandpa has done a lot of holiday specials, including multiple Halloween episodes, multiple Christmas episodes, a Valentine's Day episode, and an Easter episode. The season one episode, Afraid of the Dark, won an Emmy in 2014 for outstanding individual achievement in animation, and was awarded to character designer Nick Edwards. Uncle Grandpa was animated in stop motion for a Latin American Cartoon Network promotion in 2015, created by production company Lado C. Uncle Grandpa appears in an app featuring a number of other Cartoon Network characters designed to help teach Koreans to speak English. Uncle Grandpa Comics began being published in 2014, soon after the series premiered by Boob Comics, who also published comics for Adventure Time and Over the Garden Wall. The Uncle Grandpa Comics feature a number of different artists, either telling their own stories or breaking format and creating supplementary material like a coloring page in the first issue. The show's cancellation was a surprise to some fans, as was the last couple seasons. When it was announced that the show would be returning for a fourth and fifth season, many fans expected the seasons to match its first season episode length. However, they were shortened, with each of its subsequent seasons totaling 26 11-minute episodes. Uncle Grandpa aired its last episode on June 30th, 2017. The episode Exquisite Grandpa was produced to be the series finale. However, another episode, Uncle Grandpa the High School Years, aired right after it, making it the actual final episode and it's amazing. Go check it out. Once again, I'm Justin with Channel Frederator, and thanks again for watching 107 Facts About Uncle Grandpa. What's your favorite episode? How much do you love Pizza Steve? Comment down below and let us know. Don't forget to click that little bell icon to become part of our awesome notification squad as we're dropping new videos every day. So make sure to subscribe because remember, Frederator loves you.